The past few months, Uber's business has struggled due to coronavirus. Let's look at this company a little closer to figure out whether it's a buy or a sell. Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott, and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Uber stock by looking at their financial statements and analyzing their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Uber offers vehicles for hire, food delivery, package delivery, and through a partnership with Lime, electric bicycle, and motorized scooter rentals. It operates in 900 metropolitan areas around the world. It has 110 million active users. In the US, it has 67% market share for ride sharing. Uber has been criticized for treating its workers as independent contractors, also for weakening the taxicab business and an increase in traffic congestion. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, a one billion market cap. They're trading at 46.23 a share and they have 1.8 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So every year they have negative free cash flow. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And each year, except in 2018, they had negative net income. Revenue looks really good. It grows from 3.8 billion way up to 14 billion. So they're growing pretty rapidly. This is their income statement. The top line is the revenue. 2019, it was 14 billion. The cost directly related to generating that revenue was $7 billion. And the gross profit is the difference between revenue and cost of revenue, 6.9 billion. But the operating expenses were through the roof, $15 billion. So that gives them negative operating income of 8.6 billion. They also have 325 million of interest they pay in their debt. So their loss was over $8 billion in 2019. It was positive in 2018, but negative in 2017 and 2016. They really need to do a better job at managing their expenses because you can't operate a business at a loss indefinitely. The only reason they had a net profit in 2018 was because they sold part of their business. They had a $2.2 billion gain on the sale of the Southeast Asia operations. Also a $950 million gain on the sale of Uber Russia. They did not receive cash for this sale. They received preferred stock, so it did not help their cash flows. That's why they have negative free cash flow in 2018. This is the statement of cash flows, and their operating cash flow is negative every year. And the way you calculate free cash flow, it's operating cash flow minus capital expenditures. So they have a pretty big negative every year in free cash flow. Let's look at a capital structure. $7.6 billion of debt, $14 billion of equity. They pay 7.4% interest on their debt, and cost of debt is 5.8%. To calculate cost of debt, it's interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate. And they have 35% debt in their capital structure, so they have 65% equity. Cost of equity is 10.5%. We use the capital asset pricing model to figure that out. And part of the CAPM formula is the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And their beta is 1.07, so the stock moves with the market. Their WAC is 8.88%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We calculated four years of future free cash flows. We also calculated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's $80 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $60 billion. We divide that by 1.8 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $34. They're trading at $46. So they're trading at a 36% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street's at $54. So they're saying the stock is undervalued. It's really hard to value companies with negative free cash flow. The way a discounted cash flow model works is it looks at the prior free cash flows and then estimates those out into the future. Since this company has negative free cash flow, I can't estimate that out into the future because the value will be negative and you can't have a negative stock price. The way I calculate the future free cash flows, I use as my base case what analysts estimate the cash flows to be. And then I look at the company's financials and their competitors' financials and then adjust those cash flows as I see fit. So the stock price has been fairly steady since it IPO'd. It did drop a bit 
and then came back up. So it looks like it's almost at its all time high. This company has never paid a dividend and does not plan on paying dividends in the future. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd last year, you'd have a little more than $11,000 today. So in 2017, the company had 68 million active users. That grew to 91 million in 2018, then 111 million in 2019. The number of trips also grew pretty dramatically, 3.7 billion to 5.2 billion to 6.9 billion. Revenue also almost doubled from 7.9 billion to 14 billion. Yet they're losing money, $4 billion, it grew to $8.5 billion loss. So you can see each quarter they're growing their business. They have four segments and their ride segment is the bulk of their business. But their eats business is also growing pretty dramatically as well. And this is their EBITDA by category. EBITDA is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And you can see in their rides category, they're doing really well. They have a profit. But every other category, they're losing money. It makes you wonder why are they focusing on eats and freight and other things if they're losing money. But maybe they will make money eventually. Or maybe these are lost leaders to get them more business in the rides category. Either way, if I was an investor, I'd want to see them grow their rides business and not so much every other category. And they're getting more profitable with the rides business and less profitable with each category. In the eats business, they had negative EBITDA of 355 million, and that got worse to negative EBITDA of 1.4 billion. So they're losing money even faster in these categories. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 15.7, the median is 14.8. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. We can't look at that ratio. Average price to sales is 5.0. The median is 2.1. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. They're at 5.8, so they're a little worse than the average. The average price to book is 4.6. The median is 2.3. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They're at 5.7, so they're a little worse than the average. Equity is total assets minus total liabilities on the balance sheet. The average interest coverage ratio is 12.3. The median is 3.9. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They're negative since they have negative EBIT. EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes. The average ROE is 11%, the median is 12%. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative ROE since they have negative net income. The average current ratio is 1.8, the median is 1.3. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can easily cover their current liabilities. They have a lot of cash in their balance sheet, $11 billion, and they had negative $5 billion of free cash flow. So they can get through a couple of years, no problem, just with the cash in their balance sheet. So there's really no risk of default anytime soon for this company. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on Autodesk, Salesforce, Citrix, Datadog, Intuit, Canaxis, MyTech, Mogo, ServiceNow, Real Matters, Texas, and the Trade Desk. All in the same industry as Uber. And if Uber has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So they're worse in PE because they're negative. They do have a much better price to sales and price to book than the average. Current ratio, they're doing fine. Negative ROE, they have a little more debt than the average, but they're not too bad in debt. They're a really big company, 81 billion market cap, so they're much bigger than the average. And they don't pay a dividend, similar to most companies in this industry. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 36% premium. Their ratios look decent, but their financials look a bit weak. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a customized valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.